Hey everybody, Douglas Blair Roberts here, the Super Vader 400, and of course the Brown Skin Human coming back at you with another with another um movie series review intro. My previous movie series review intro, whenever I uploaded to YouTube for some odd reason, the newest the Crush 40, the Crush 40 upload of Sonic What I Made of. Their, their uploaded version, for some odd reason, has a copyright on it, on it, and, um, whenever I see, and it's, the copyright is not, is, is actually not a problem, according to YouTube, but if I ever want to set this account up for monetization, it will be a problem, so I'm going to do a remade version using two non-copyrighted songs, even though this is an intro for movie reviews and rants, the one I made of, well, from that, well, from now on, on this channel, on this channel, on this channel, will only be, will only be the outro, and I'll use one of the non cop the old school non copyrighted uploads of Sonic What I Made of. The intros will feature the Sonic Heroes theme, which I haven't used in a long time, and of course the iconic We Can that I use a lot now. So, um, so um, yeah. So um yeah, every everywhere everywhere on every other platform, every other platform, the intros I will I will use the old intro. So with that being said, let's get started right now. part will be the Tom Holland series if you see my videos if you see my um, videos or see me in the comment sections you'll know I am a huge fan of the Sam Raimi I'm a huge biased fanboy of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films and the Tom Holland I consider those I consider these to be 
the definite betrayal of Spider-Man, and I consider the Sam Raimi to be the second best Spider-Man film trilogy after the after the Tom Holland um, trilogy, and the trilogy that pretty much one of the early superhero franchises that started it all for the superhero comic book genre that started with X-Men. But these are liked much more because these were closer to the cor closer to the source material and were truer to the characters truer to the characters than the X-Men's films were, but, um, you know, Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-Man, I'm what you call it, I think Spider-Man 3, I think Spider-Man 3 is the best, with the 2002 being the most exciting, and, um, you got Spider-Man 2, which is the most popular, but I consider the second best of this, uh, franchise, of this franchise, the second best and the least exciting of the, um, quote-unquote franchise, but, all three films are um, quote unquote awesome as I'm about to um, explain yeah Spider-Man 2002 man I always get nostalgic whenever I pop on Spider-Man 2002 one of the greatest films um, ever and it gets even better while it's definitely showed its age it gets even better every time I um, quote unquote um, every time I quote unquote watch it the storyline the cast the storyline cast, the action, special effects, realism, realism, and storytelling, everything, everything, one of the greatest films ever. This is my opinion, one of Sam Raimi's finest um, work, and Sam Raimi is one of my all-time favorite, um, direct, favorite, um, quote-unquote, um, directors, and, um, and, um, yeah, it was amazing. See, as a kid, I got it, actually, I got into the comic books right around the time I saw this movie. So all I had was the cartoons to compare this movie to, and and um and um seeing and then seeing when I was a kid, seeing all those scenes from the cartoon come to life. Not only come to life, the film be violent as hell, like something out of Mortal Kombat, something out of a uh, Mortal Com Mortal um combat every scene the scene with the wrestler the scene with the uh, wrestler uncle ben's death the robber the robber who shot uncle ben the robber who shot uncle ben um the green the norman osborne trying to kill hit trying to kill and in this film successfully murdering the people who fired him who removed him, who forced him out of his own company um forced him out of his own company um peter and harry's peter and harry's relationship Peter and Harry's relationship, and, um, and, um, the, yeah, the, my favorite, my favorite thing was, my favorite, my number one favorite thing in scenes were the action sequences, man, especially the final one between, between the Goblin and Peter Parker, Spider-Man had never been that violent, gory, and intense, man, still one of the most violent, intense, and gory fight scenes I've ever seen in comic book based, um, comic book based movies, man, the final fight between Peter and the Goblin, then another thing I liked about this film was, this is one problem I've always had with, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, with Spider-Man, when it comes to Spider-Man comic books, the Spider-Man in the comic books, he goes from a regular teenager with little money to to when he becomes a superhero to spider to to the to the to 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 Spider-Man instantly and he has a cool Hollywood theater stage production style style of costume made straight off the rack made straight off the rack whereas if and you keep in mind unlike other teenage superheroes like Robin, Aqualad, Superboy for the versions that are that feature Superman and Superboy as a separate people. Superboy, Wonder Girl, um um Kid Flash, Kid Flash, and me and um many more um superheroes like that. Their their costumes are provided by their mentors. They're provided by their mentors. And for the other adult heroes, their costumes are either made by some scientific environmental some scientific environmental intergalactic based accident 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 or their costumes are custom made to fit their powers like the Fantastic Four or like X-Men their supplier the supplier of their costumes Professor X Professor Xavier is extremely wealthy 
in half their made is extremely wealthy in half their made. Peter Parker just went from a regular kid with little to no money, little to no money, to making a cool Spider-Man, making a cool theatrical Spider-Man um, costume. I like how in this film they did it again in No Way Home. In this in this film, he started. He had that. He had that Halloween. He had that cheesy Halloween ninja wrestling costume. Ninja um, wrestling um, costume for the first half of the film. Then after this, after his um, after his after his uncle died, he then trained. He then upgraded. He then used the money he obtained, upgraded to the to the iconic costume, to the iconic costume from the 90s. I love the transformation, the journey, and the Peter Parker character, the, the Peter Parker and development of the characters from this entire trilogy, in this entire trilogy. Spe when it comes to spectacle and realism, spectacle and realism, this film is, in my opinion, way better than its comic book counterpart. However, when it comes to storytelling and build up, when it comes to storytelling and build up, the comic books are better because they have more time. They have more time, more characters, and more issues to better flesh out these characters, flesh out um, these characters. So the films are the greatest. So these films are the greatest of all. So these films are the quote unquote greatest of all. Um, this film, this film, while um, this film, while not the best of the trilogy, it was a great start, and it's the most. Um, it was the most exciting. Then rewatching it years later, and even now getting into the comics, reading some of the comic books, and doing more comic book research, seeing how close this was. This trilogy, like I said, was a 60% close adaptation with a big 40% difference. Big 40% difference, but this was close. Not only that, these these films are the closest you'll get to a quote unquote Spider-Man. Close, you'll get to a Spider-Man adaptations. Both. Andrew Garfield's and Tom Holland's went in a completely different direction, in a completely different reimagined um, direction. This and this is encompassed every era of Spider-Man, which is what a Spider-Man movie should be. This has this is the animated series, the animated series, the um, the 90s, 60s, 70s, and 80s comic books, and various adaptations. The 2000s Ultimate and the 2000s Ultimate. Um, the 2000 Ultimate version, because uh, Peter and Harry, in the Ultimate version, they knew each other in high school. In the original version, something I didn't realize, they didn't meet each other. They didn't meet each other until college, uh, meet each other until um, quote unquote college. So um, that's um, that's um, that's quote unquote Spider Man, Spider Man. That's uh, Spider-Man 2000. I'm um, so that's the Spider-Man um, com comic books, and um, yeah, I enjoy I enjoy the entire cast. I like the Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, the woman who plays Aunt May, the guy who plays Uncle Ben. Which sadly to say, as I'm reading this, sadly to say, um, that guy is now um. That guy is quote unquote now um is now deceased. What oh yeah, Cliff Robertson. Clifford Robinson. As I'm recording this right now, that guy is now deceased and he's been dead for a long time. He died in sep September tenth, two thousand eleven. I seriously did not know that till like rather recently, till till like rather recently when I decided to look it up for research so I can review 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 um review re watch and review this film again but man yeah he died September 2000 um he died September 2011 of natural causes but um yeah he was I thought he was a way better Uncle Ben him than the Uncle Ben we got than Martin Sheen's Uncle Ben in the Amazing Spider-Man then you got Rosemary Harris who was awesome Aunt May Aunt May in No Way Home is in my opinion way better but um this was a good I made um right here and um James Franco James Franco still still if probably forever will be the best Harry Osborne Green Goblin and speaking of the Goblin characters this incarnation these incarnations of Harry Osborne and Norman Osborne William Defoe's 
Green Goblin will forever be my all-time favorite depiction of the Green Goblin character. I like how they had to redesign him for this film. They couldn't have that cheesy Halloween Goblin costume look in the in in a, in a 2000s in a modernized 2000s live action film. So they upgraded him to that um they upgraded him to that cool Power Ranger Giver Giver muscle tan muscle tan um muscle tan armor and what you call it, made it his own with his um Joker with his Joker Joker style um with his Joker Joker style personality and I like and I loved his um and I like the film they used some of the lizards storyline with Goblin here they gave him a cool Jekyll and Hyde persona per, 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 persona you got the good hearted Norman Osborn then you got the violet dominant Goblin persona persona so uh, so um yeah that, that was a uh, spider-man 2002 that was spider-man 2002 and um kirsten dunst kirsten dunst everyone likes to pick on her quote unquote mary jane i loved kirsten dunst's Mary Jane. I actually like it as an adult. It's realistic. I had a problem with her character as a teenager, as a teenager and early adult, but watching it now, it's realistic and much better than the Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone relationship in the newer, in the um, amazing version. So, um, yeah, still an awesome, um, still an awesome, um, movie, movie. So, um, yeah, um, the next film. Spider-Man 2002, Spider-Man 2004, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 2. Uh, at the time when I saw this, I thought it was the greatest thing. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. I uh, thought it was the greatest thing ever until I saw 3. Uh, it was the greatest thing ever. Now, I still think this is one of the best superhero movies, but it's not the best superhero movie, and it's not the best Spider-Man movie. But it is iconic. I will recognize um, that recognize that um this film this film of course takes much to my surprise um it takes inspiration from the animated series which I immediately caught when I saw it for the first time everyone who talks about Doc Ock's character who was different from the Doc Ock from the comic books this is this Doc Ock this Doc Ock Doc Ock being Peter Parker's mentor and being a more sympathetic character that was depicted in the 1994 animated series except his motivations were, were different but both versions of Doc Ock feature them being mentors of Peter Parker the mentors and teachers of Peter Parker they also feature they also feature um, quote unquote um, characters trying to regain the characters trying to regain what they lost what they um what they quote unquote um what they um lost and that's what um this film was and according to um Wikipedia this um this film uh this film takes inspiration from Doctor Octopus's debut in 1964 and the 1966 story arc if this be my destiny in another popular arc 1967 story arc called spider-man no more spider-man no more with the scene there's a scene in this film where he keep peter parker keeps losing his powers keeps losing his powers at first i thought that was only something that was from the cartoons from the cartoons i had no idea the comic book did that first did that um quote unquote um first so um yeah so um um yeah um yeah um film and love Peter Parker's development in this film this film was more Peter Parker than the last one this film was more Peter Parker more Peter Parker than the last one yeah Peter Parker um um yeah Peter Parker cr crying and not wanting to be Spider-Man wanting to have pretty much a normal life but he knows that with, with great power comes great responsibility he can never have truly have a normal life normal life and this really made me like the Peter Parker character he loved Mary Jane 
but he knew she was she he knew she was being engaged to uh J, J. Jonah Jameson's son J. J. Jonah Jameson's um son son and wanted her want want wanted her, her happiness wanted her happiness and I didn't that only scene I didn't like was her her ditching that dish, ditching that guy at the altar humiliating him and ditching that guy at the altar to be with Peter Parker to be with Peter Parker so, but um a great um great film is always my favorite scenes are the battle scenes followed by every followed by um everything followed by quote unquote um everything else and Alfred Molina Alfred Molina made the Doc Ock role of um, his own his own and um loved his um redemption arc at the end and um I also like the forgot to mention this film this film had I also like switch foot the band switch foots meant to live song which there's a music video of that with scenes from spider-man 2 which makes this film even more iconic more iconic and part of society this one had this movie had switch foot the last one had nickelback's hero hero making these films even more iconic so um yeah love the development of harry osborne with him taking over his father's company after his death and just like the comic books eventually figure out that it was Peter Parker Spider-Man Peter Parker is Spider-Man and uh, well he already knew Spider-Man killed his father but figuring out that it was P that Peter Parker is Spider-Man really kick-starting and setting up the rivalry between the two well, between these two which will become a huge part of the third movie so yeah spider-man 2 even bigger badder and better than the first one but i still think i start i still find the first one to be much more exciting and one of the best superhero movies ever but not the best and damn sure not the best spider-man second best spider-man second best spider-man second best spider-man and third best um actual spider-man quote unquote um movie movie we're counting the tom holland series Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 3, in my opinion, my opinion of its time, of its time, the greatest Spider-Man film ever and the ultimate comic book movie. This film had Peter Parker, Spider-Man, the black suit, the black suit, Venom, Eddie Brock, Flip Marco, the Sandman, and Harry Osborn as the new Goblin, I think all in one film this was the ultimate comic book movie at the time there was nothing there was nothing um like this and love peter parker's development love how he incorporated the black suit in here and love peter parker's um confidence 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 i liked everything about this film except for one thing the end when they killed off venom when they killed off Eddie Brock in the Venom character, the whole story was Sam Raimi never liked, never cared for, and liked the Venom character. So he put so but Sony forced him to put it in, put it in anyway. So he put in the worst version possible. And then right when it was getting real good, right when it was getting real good, when Peter Parker webbed Eddie Brock from what you call it, he threw the bomb. He threw the bomb, and Eddie tried to recombine with it, killing himself and um, killing himself in the symbiote. Ruining any, any chances for any future symbiote based uh, films and basically killing the franchise, forcing us to sit, forcing that crappy reboot in 2012. In 2000, um, in 2000, um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. So that's the only thing I didn't like. And the film, you would have took Venom, Topher Grace, Eddie Brock out of the movie. You would have had an even better. You would have had an even better. Um, you would have had an even better movie because the whole film was basically Harry Osborn and Sandman and have the Venom stuff at the end. Have the Venom stuff at the end. Um. Um. Yeah. So um. So um, the film. The film was um film so yeah the film was awesome as always the action sequences followed by everything else in the film was um 
was uh, my favorites. Action sequence here, this one had more action, but still not as not as intense, not as intense or ex ex as exciting as Spider-Man 2002, but awesome. And it was awesome. Finally, happy Thomas he and Church brought one of my favorite Spider-Man villains and characters to life. He brought the Sandman. He brought the Sandman to um. He brought the Sandman to life in this um in this quote unquote um movie in this um quote unquote movie and Topher Grace was a surprisingly awesome portrayal of Venom facial feature wise he resembles Eddie Brock he resembles Eddie Brock he lacks the muscular physique but he resembles Eddie Brock and um this version of Venom this version of Venom this version of Venom uh yeah is, is more in line with his ultimate version appearance wise and he looks better than his ultimate version I hate the ultimate version of uh, Venom the character design the design um y yeah so um what about Venom what else about Venom so um um yeah the greatest Spider-Man the greatest uh greatest Spider-Man movie ever and I like how once again spot on with the comic books and this added inspirations to the comic books itself after this comic book the Sandman character usually a villainous character briefly became briefly in the franchise became a more heroic character after this uh, film in Sandman <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church was spot on with the Sandman the only difference between this the only difference between Hayden Church's portrayal and the original portrayal is Sandman and I hope they and I hope they did this if they ever brought Sandman back into a reboot. Yeah, this sympathetic character was cool, but have Sandman be a thug, be a badass, be a badass like he was in the comic books and cartoons, <laughs> in the quote unquote comic books and um and um quote unquote and like a badass in the com cartoons and comic books. So um. <laughs> Yeah, I love James Franco, James Franco, James Franco and Peter Parker's hair, Peter Parker's relationship and awesome fight scene in the uh, film. This marks the final appearance of actor Cliff Robertson, who this was he he retired after the film after this and he died in 2011. So um yeah, Spider-Man three um yeah one of the greatest films ever I just hate the end because they ruined the chances for any sequels I didn't see any big time villain they were planning on having Morbius but I didn't see any time big time villain taking the um taking take taking it up after you basically killed you killed off three of your main villains and your fourth one Sandman basically Sandman basically became a good guy so there was no um what's his name there was no uh, what's his name and um they like how once again it's spot on with the comic books and spot on the cartoon and the cartoons, especially Harry Osborne's character. Him 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 dying. Except in the comic in the comic books it was drugs, he died because of drugs. In the movies, he died he died. It was Venom killing him. So, um yeah, Spider Man three, the greatest one of the greatest the the greatest superhero movie one of the greatest superhero movies, one of the greatest and most underrated superhero movies of its time, of its quote unquote, um, of its quote unquote, uh, of its quote unquote time, and, um, yeah, one of the greatest of its time, and, um, One of the greatest, one of the great, yeah, one of the greatest of its time, and um, and still awesome, still awesome today, and nowhere near as bad as people make it out to be. You haven't even, like I said, you had an even better film if you would have took Topher Grace Venom out of there. So um, yeah, this was my review of the uh, of the amazing of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy trilogy. You don't hear the rest of the music. Turn the video off right now. Thank <laughs> you.